Thank you, thank you. They've only given me eight minutes, so we're gonna power talk our way through this. And first of all, James Urbinski was with Doctors Without Borders in Rwanda with me, and he saved hundreds upon hundreds of injured children and families with me. There's about 20,000 of you here today, and at one time, as a general, I commanded close to 12,000 soldiers. But every one of those soldiers had a family. Every one of those soldiers was an individual. Just like every one of you here has a family, every one of you is an individual. But you are part of a whole new generation. You are part of a generation that I call the Generation Without Borders. And this is one of the tools that you are using to prove that you are citizens of the world and that your peers in all the countries of the world are equal to you and they want to talk to you and you want to talk to them. This, these are your tools of the revolution of activism now. So, so members, members individually of this new revolution of activism, of this generation without borders, because there's no borders with this electronic capability. You can, in fact, nearly Skype anybody in the world if you put the technology there, which is now coming. But what about all those people in the world? What about you and now a member of that world? Are we all being treated equal? Are we actually all being treated the same? Are all the youths of the world equal? Or are some more equal than others? In being able to produce these things, we are also getting material from some of the countries that are still at war, like the Congo. And the people who are mining the equipment needed in there are children. Your peers, they're in the mines. They're being used as child soldiers. They're being used as child labor. They're dying. They're starving. They're being abused. The girls are being massively abused only because they have no capability of protection. They've got no institutions to protect them. They've got no school systems. And they are literally abandoned. But they are not any more abandoned because you are not going to let them be abandoned because you are engaged. You, you are without borders. There's no borders. There's no limit to what you can do. Let me prove that we're all the same and that those peers, those who are exactly the same ages of you, who haven't got this whole structure to support them, want to talk to you and want to hear you and want to see you because they feel they should be equal and they should be having opportunities to be equal. During the genocide, when I was moving between the lines of the fighting forces, I was down this road one day in no man's land where there should be anybody, and there was a little boy, well, he was about seven years old, in the middle of the road. And he had been using young children, five, six, seven years old, to stop the convoys of food going through. And the children had to stay there. If they didn't, they simply killed them. And then they'd stop the convoys and steal the water, the food, the medical supplies to keep the war going. And these extremists kept the slaughter going. So as I was approaching this young boy, thinking it was an ambush, I jumped out, looked around, no ambush. So we went to the huts along the road to find somebody to take care of him, and all we found were people who had been killed weeks beforehand. And as we're looking, we lose the little boy. So we double back and we find him in the hut where there are two people, a father and a mother and some children who had been dead for a while, and he's sitting there. 
So I picked him up and I brought him in front of my vehicle and I looked at him and his stomach was bloated and he was dirty, he was mangy, he was in rags, there was flies all around him. But then I looked into his eyes and what I saw in the eyes of that seven-year-old boy in the middle of that war, that genocide, that slaughter was exactly what I saw in the eyes of my seven-year-old son when I left for Africa. They were the eyes of a human child and they were exactly the same. That little boy is just as human and just as real and needs the same love and care as you do. So you got a mandate. You have a mandate. You can't stay hidden in your little areas because you are now without borders. You can't hide. You are becoming activists. You are going to be the most activist generation in the history of mankind because you can actually talk to mankind. So, so what are we going to do? I would like to sort of recommend. I'm a general. I can't order anymore, but I can recommend. I'd like to recommend that we create in this incredible country of ours a rite of passage. A rite of passage that when you finish high school, that you have underneath your bed a pair of dirty boots. A pair of boots that you got dirty when you went to some of these developing countries where all these peers of yours are and went and saw them, talked to them, helped them, and brought them back to life. So, you, you, the generation without borders, are going to start this revolution. You are going to get engaged. You're going to become activists. You're going to go over there, and you're going to bring other people over there, and you're going to feel and hear and taste and listen and cry and laugh and encourage and help and build humanity because every one of us is equal. There isn't one of us more equal than the other and we're all in it together. Take care.